Hi everyone, this is our fourth and final video of Module 1, and as I mentioned in the previous video, I just wanted to spend a little time showing you some of the uh, more notable environmental disasters of the past hundred or so years, uh, and in so doing, we will uh, see some of the need for a clean and healthy environment and the ways in which humans can greatly affect nature in, the, in a negative way. So. Uh, I told you in the last video about the Dos Cuadras oil spill. So also in the late 1960s was the Cuyahoga River fire, uh, and this is in uh, Ohio near Cleveland. Uh, at the time, this fire cost, caused $100,000 of damage, which is um, $664,000 in today's money. Uh, the fire was caused because just industrial wastes at the time, chemical wastes, had been dumped into the river. That was pretty standard practice, unfortunately. And they had collected and um, built up on this river so badly that um, they caught fire and they just kept on burning. And it gained national attention. So I have a few pictures before we go on to another disaster. So just this guy's hand is just covered in waste it looks almost like crude oil um, a river on fire N another one um, there's a side story to this you can look it up online technically these two photos are not actually the Cuyahoga River fire apparently um, they were of a another river fire right around the same time which is also depressing um, search for it you'll find it um, I think there's an article on it's like the Cuyahoga River um, Conservation website or something like that. Um, fire, rivers on fire, very scary things. So one of the most famous oil spills ever in this country, the Exxon Valdez, this was back in 1989 in the Prince William Sound of Alaska. Uh, 10 to 11 million gallons of crude oil were spilled and at the time it was the largest oil spill to date but today after the gulf after the deepwater horizon oil spill in the gulf of mexico a couple of years ago exxon valdez is now the second largest ever and we know after some investigations that the uh, accident was caused by a variety of human caused errors the accident ultimately led to the oil pollution Act of 1990, which among other things fit, required the phasing in of double walled hulls. Um, this is where the uh, oil tanker has two walls, kind of like Titanic, I guess. If I think that was a thing. Um, so that if the outer wall gets punctured, then the inner wall still maintains seaworthiness. Okay, so that is the Prince, Prince William Sound. Um, you can even still find oil today, apparently. If you go up there, you can dig in the sand and find tar balls and um, liquid oil still deep in the sand. Um, lots of wildlife, of course, um, died. And so, just to show you where this is and how expansive it was, this is Alaska, of course. The, um, the black box down here around the middle, that is blown up over here on the left. Uh, just to give you a, 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 the scale of this oil spill, I mean, that Alaska is a huge state to begin with, and that square, therefore, is also pretty huge. That was a pretty damn big oil spill. Okay, um, 1952, so uh, these are apparently, these are not in chronological order, but 1952, um, London, United Kingdom, there was um, an unusually weird um, cold spell where um, thick fog was mixing with black smoke which caused smog and I, you might know that term by now fog plus smoke equals smog and uh, this might seem like an outlandish number but it's absolutely true this one environmental event killed an estimated 12,000 people 4,000 of those deaths were, deaths were immediate 8,000 more occurred over the following weeks due to health-related problems, due to smog-related health problems. Uh, this accident led to two different British Clean Air Acts, which began the process of eliminating coal from, the home, from homes and factories as a heating source. 
So um, pictures exist, of course. Um, it really just looked like a really foggy day, but um, people, 12,000 people died because of this. And so the idea here is that um, it was early December. It was uh, an unusual cold spell that caused, an, um, caused the need for um, homeowner, homeowners, apartment build man, building managers to burn an unusual amount of coal to keep everybody warm. And bad timing at the same time, a thermal inversion occurred in the atmosphere, which essentially trapped all the smoke from all of the coal-fired heating systems, um, trapped them inside the city. Uh, and so the way a th what a thermal inversion is, is that usually the atmosphere is kind of um, stratified so that the lower layers are warmer and you get colder, the air gets colder as you go higher in altitude. So hot smoke tends to rise and rise and rise up into colder layers. But during a thermal inversion, the word inversion means a flipping, so during a thermal inversion the warm lower level and the colder upper level invert and what we end up happening down here on the on the right <coughs> is that the um, the inversion layer acts kind of like a greenhouse kind of acts like a glass domey layer that traps inside the smoke um, that smoke concentrated mixed with fog caused smog uh, and I found this on Google uh, some time ago. I don't remember where exactly the picture is from, but it's a pretty good picture showing a thermal inversion where all of that smoke really seems to be kind of trapped inside of a bubble. Okay, so um, very few examples, but some pretty extreme ones. And so um, I, I hope I demonstrated um, that there's really a need to study and protect the environment. And, and hopefully you wouldn't be taking this class if you didn't already have a sense that we do need to protect our environment. Um, usually we, we, we accomplish that protection through some kind of environmental laws and they usually work. They usually do their job. So summary, there have been many environmental disasters in human history. Our laws, they do, they do tend to be reactive, meaning something bad happens and then we try to fix it but even so, I mean, those things work. They usually make great improvements in air quality, water quality, just general environmental quality all around.